What inspires you? I lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where will come my help? My help comes from the eternal God, maker of the heavens and the earth. My name is Paul Kipnis. I'm rabbi at Congregation Orami in Calabasas. And like many of you, 50 years ago, I was lifting my eyes to the heavens to watch as Neil Armstrong, the astronaut, became the first human being to walk on the moon. Many of us remember where we were at that moment in 1969. I was sitting on my parents' lap, watching the momentous event on a small black and white TV. My parents woke us up, me and my siblings, because this scientific feat inspired them and inflamed their imagination. Some years later, after I watched for the first time a rerun of Star Trek, I was hooked. Combined with the memory of that moon landing and with Star Trek, I developed a lifelong fascination, as many of you have, with space exploration, with science fiction. Back on my 32nd birthday, my wife Michelle gave me the best present. She had worked out with our friend Ira Stephen Bear, then the executive producer of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, that I would get a walk-on role. If you go into Netflix, you can see me, without my goatee, in an episode called Strange Bedfellows in the last season of Star Trek. I think it's episode 20 or 21. There I am in the back of Quark's bar on the right-hand side of the screen. I appear twice in the episode. It was such a joy to be involved in that. Why is space such a fascination? Why do I and millions of others look to the heavens to find fascination and inspiration and an abundance of promise? Because out there, in the untouched regions of space, we see a canvas unsullied by human hands. Out in space exists the promise of places yet undiscovered by humans. Out there in space exists an opportunity to create an even better version of what we have here and now. A society ideally based on tzedek, justice, and emet, truth, filled with ahava, love, so it will be a place, a space of shalom, of wholeness and peace. Out there in space is the prospect of meeting other sentient life forms, those whose unique perspectives might help us understand our own existence with more openness and honesty. Like the biblical ancestors, the Israelites, approaching that promised land with a combination of tikva, hope, and trepidation, but an abundance of heat-rug shoot, of excitement. We modern-day humans looked 50 years ago, and even look today to the skies for that hope, the hope that we can improve upon life here by creating a new society on another moon or planet way out there. And even if it is challenging or dangerous, we're hooked. I remember that sad day in 1986 when the Space Shuttle Challenger blew up. My heart burst because I was hoping so much for what they could accomplish. And yet I remember thinking that if they asked me to join the crew of that, the very next space shuttle, I'd say yes in a second. Because like many of you, I would love to be part of discovering a new place or even creating a better existence, perhaps out there in space. What inspires you? Where were you when they landed on the moon? Or when the space shuttle first took off? Or when they announced in a race, an attempt to get to Mars? Did it inspire you? Were you filled with hope eternal? I was. And I hope that whether it's in the space race or in science fiction, somewhere you can look up to the heavens and there find inspiration and hope. I'm Rabbi Paul Kipnis of Congregation Orami. I'm wishing you inspiration and hope always.